Hi, this is Jay McClellan, and this video is part two of my build of a harmonic drive fourth axis for my milling machine and my CNC router. In the part one video, I built the drivetrain of the fourth axis, and I tried it out using this prototype enclosure that I made on my 3D printer. And in part two, I'm going to make the real enclosure out of steel, machine it to shape, and put it all together and try it out. I bought the steel at my local used metal store and then I used my bandsaw to cut it approximately to shape, just a little bit oversized. So I have a 4 inch square steel tube for the main body, I have the two steel plates for the back and the bottom, and then I cut this little strip to make the brackets that are going to go inside where the uh, harmonic drive flanges are going to mount to the unit. I sanded off the mill scale from these three pieces of steel. They're looking nice and shiny now, which will give me nice clean surfaces for welding. When I sit it on the base plate, and I'm going to sit it that way, it rocks quite a bit. And so I'm going to put it on the mill and mill this side flat just to give me a nice uh, solid mating before I weld it up. So I'm going to take a very light cut, just a few thousandths, as little as I can. Next I'm going to square up the ends of the tube. And I have the uh, surface that I just machined flat clamped against this angle plate, which has been precision ground and specified to be square within two and a half ten thousandths across its width. To keep the part from moving, I added a second angle block. It's not quite as big, but it's bolted down real solidly. <laughs> Next, I squared up the edges of the plates, keeping them against an angle block that I aligned with the y-axis of the mill. After spending a lot more time than I care to admit, I have two rectangular pieces of steel with edges that are squared uh, to each other and that are the right size for the final piece. I've put some bluing on these pieces so I can mark out the locations of the slots. Now I'll cut the ledge in the back of the bottom plate. To cut the slots in the side, I'm using my 3 8 inch roughing mill, and I'm going to try to cut this in one pass. So I'm cutting the full 3 8 inch plate with this end mill, and that's, that's a tough operation on a lightweight mill like this. So I have everything locked down except for the Y axis. first thing I need to weld are these little corner brackets that will support the flanges of the harmonic drive. I have to do this first because I'm going to have to get through the back of the tube to weld onto the back of these. And the corners of the tube are not perfectly square, so I numbered these and ground each one to fit in its corner so that it fits nice and flush. I weld up the enclosure using my wire feed welder and I'm using a flux cord wire with no shielding gas to do the welding. I'd really prefer to use MIG welding with a shielding gas because it gives a neater result, but this light duty welder does a better job on the heavier steel plate that I've got using the flux cord wire, so that's what I'm going to use. I've got it set up to weld the bracket with the first bracket clamped in place, and I'm going to come in and put a tack weld on each side just to hold it in place, then I can remove the clamp. I'll do that for all four brackets, and then I'll flip it over and weld them from the back. I'm not going to try to video the actual welding because it wouldn't show up very well and it's hard on the camera, so I'm going to go ahead and weld up these brackets and I'll come right back. Here they are all tack welded. That went pretty well, so now I'll flip it over and uh, put a more solid weld on the back of each bracket. After welding the brackets, I cleaned up the inside of the tube with a sandblaster because this will be my last chance to get to the inside easily. I have the main assembly all clamped up and ready to weld. I gave it a light spray of this spatter shield, which should help reduce the welding spatter that sticks to the part so it'll be a little less cleanup. First I tack welded the pieces together so that I could remove all of the clamps. Then I went back and welded all of the seams in several passes. A professional could get them smoother, but they're nice solid welds and should do the job. I finished up the welds and then I used an angle grinder and a sandblaster to clean things up. 
I made the steel plates thicker than I think they need to be in the end because I knew that they would distort quite a bit from the welding. In particular, this bottom plate gets pulled up by this weld on each side. As the molten material of the weld uh, cools, it solidifies and bonds the plate together, but it's still quite hot. And as it cools from that temperature down to room temperature, it contracts, so the weld is under tension, and it pulls the ends of this plate up quite a bit. Now it's time to flatten the base of the assembly, and I have it mounted upside down so that the base is up, and I've clamped it as rigidly as I can manage. light passes and removed about 20 thou from the highest part in the middle. And so you can see here where the black mill scale is still on the steel where it hasn't been cut yet. And this gives an interesting picture of the, the contour of the distortion that happened in the plate when it was welded on the bottom. I measured the greatest distortion of the plate over on this side at about 60 thousandths. So about a sixteenth of an inch that it bent down. It's quite a lot. And uh, so I'll have to take off a fair amount of material, but that's okay because I have plenty of plate thickness. My only concern is that as I take material off, it may start distorting a little bit more. So uh, I'm hoping that it, to, as I get close to the final cut, it's going to be fairly stable. And I think I'll be able to get a flat surface without taking off too much material. Mm -hmm. It took me six passes at 10 to 15 thousandths off on each pass in order to get the surface basically flat. And once it was, then I took a pass with a very, very light cut, just about two thousandths off. And then after that was done, I went and took another cut in this direction, going at 90 degree angle to the first one, just a spring cut without moving the head at all. You can see quite a pattern in here with the low light angle, but it's actually very flat. My friend David is a real machinist and not just a hobbyist like me, and he advised me to put a slot down the middle of the bottom plate so that I can fit a spline to it and use that to align it to the table of the mill when I mount the uh, drive. Now the outside surface of the tube is not precisely machined, but I've got a couple of 1-2-3 blocks clamped to the outside, and I'm going to center it up on in between those surfaces so it's as centered as I can get it on the tube. There we go. So that's my zero point on one side. I'll find the zero point on the other side and set it halfway in between, accounting for the backlash of the table since I'll be moving it in opposite directions. I verified that the slot width equals the nominal size of my end mill, 375, and my slots are 12 millimeters or 472, so I need to come out 49 thousandths on each side of the slot in order to reach the desired size. Before I remove the part from the bed of the mill, I want to do one last check for flatness across its width. In particular, I want to make sure that cutting that alignment slot didn't allow it to curve additionally as some tension was released in the steel. So I've got a test indicator zeroed out about in the center of the plate. And as I move it from the center to the outside edge, it's down about four thousandths, four tenths rather, four ten thousandths. And if I go all the way to the outside edge, then it's up to about five ten thousandths. It's slightly less on the other side, uh, about four ten thousandths, and I can certainly live with that. Now I'm going to machine the back surface of the housing, which I have placed up here, and I took the 
bottom surface of the housing, which is now the side, and place it against this precision ground angle block that I've aligned to the axis of the mill with a test indicator. And I carefully indicated in the surface that I machined earlier. So when I was machining the bottom, I cut this surface as a reference, and then I indicated it in so that this is horizontal, uh, according to my measurements, within a couple of tenths across its entire width. I took my final skim cut at just one and a half thou, and judging from the sound, I think it cut uniformly over the entire surface. So I don't think I had significant movement or deflection during my roughing pass, and I think I have a nice flat surface on this side as well. Off camera, I milled the tops of the mounting flanges flat, and then I bolted the unit down to the table and to my precision angle block. With the unit aligned vertically as precisely as I can get it, I'm going to machine off the front faces of these mounting brackets that I welded on. I trimmed off the brackets to the same height relative to the bottom of the table, and uh, then took a final skim pass, just a couple thou to give them a nice smooth finish. The last step I need to do in this orientation is to mill off the top of the tube so that the distance from the bracket to the top of the tube is less than the thickness of the flange of the harmonic drive. I want it to protrude above the tube because I'm gonna put a cover plate over it and then bolt it down, and I want that cover plate to bear directly on the flange and not hit the top of the tube. I have the mill centered on my alignment groove that I cut in the bottom plate in this direction, and then I centered it uh, top to bottom on the walls of the tube, so it is as centered as I can get it. And the holes for mounting the drive uh, have an offset from the center of 1.462 inches in each direction. And so I've zeroed out the dials on the table, I just have to move it 1.462 inches in each direction. I drilled the holes to 17 64ths and now I'm tapping them with an M8 metric tap to match the mounting bolts I'm going to use. And I'm using a spring-loaded tap guide mounted in the collet position exactly above the hole so that I get a nice vertical start to the tap and a uh, little bit of tapping fluid to help it go in. I finished drilling and tapping all of the holes in the mounting brackets. I carefully deburred them, and then I checked the fit with the harmonic drive, and it fits great. After I finished machining the mounting brackets, I went ahead and installed the drive unit and put a hole in the side to pass the wires through for the stepper motor. And off camera, I made this cover plate out of aluminum to cover the gap between the drive flanges and the tube. And once the whole unit is done in the end and finished, I'll seal up the gaps to keep out dirt and so on. This bears on the top of the mounting flanges of the harmonic drive, but it does not actually touch the tube here. There's a little gap so that it bears only on the drive and isn't putting any force on the tube. I want these bolts to hold the drive down very solidly to the mounting brackets inside. Now that, uh, now that that's done, I've got it mounted and I'm ready to do the next step, which is to machine the edge of the faceplate. And I have to do that with the drive actually rotating. So I've got it hooked up to my control box and I've got it set to jog the A axis very slowly, jogging it forward and then I'll slowly feed the cutter into, into the side here. I'm feeding in about a hundredth of an inch per rotation, about ten thousandths. So I've got a little mark on the top of the little mark on the top of the chuck, and each time it comes around I just advance the wheel in. Uh, another 10 thou.
With the outer diameter reduced to where I want it, next I'm going to machine the, the face that mates against the back of the chuck. I've got the mill set to cut about two thousandths off this surface. I put the calipers on the projection on top of the faceplate, and I can see that it's about 78 thou oversize. I checked again, and I'm down to just about 3 thou oversize. I cut in as close as I dared. I think I'm just a tiny bit oversized yet. I hope so. Uh, but it's uh, within about a thou, and so I'm going to make sure the back of my chuck is well cleaned out, and we'll test to fit. That actually fits perfectly. <laughs> so I'm going to stop right there. I think I took it in a little too far. I should have started checking a little bit sooner, but not a problem. Um, it it's took just a little bit of pressure to push it down, and I think it maybe uh, abraded the surface a tiny bit as it did, but that's a beautiful, beautiful fit. So time to stop. I decided to chamfer the edges of the faceplate just to give it a nice finished appearance and break the burrs. And to chamfer the bottom side, I'm going to reach underneath it with this dovetail cutter. I have a 45 degree dovetail cutter. Next I'll chamfer the top edges. That concludes the building of the fourth axis, and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. The faceplate came out really good. I've got a nice surface finish. You can see some swirl marks, but you can't feel them. It's, it's a really nice flat surface, and I think the runout's going to be very low. I'll check that shortly. Uh, so to mount the chuck, all I have to do is lay it on there. With the holes lined up, then I just put the bolts through the front, tighten those up, and it's all assembled. I have the assembly mounted on the mill and I decided to do a quick sanity check of the runout of the overall assembly. This chuck is specified to have a runout of no more than three thousandths. And so if I'm within that, then I'll know that my faceplate is reasonably well machined and, and a good match for the chuck. In the chuck, I have a short length of drill rod that I presume is relatively straight, and I have a dial test indicator placed just beyond the jaws. There are definitely uh, other ways and more thorough ways to check uh, different types of run out of a chuck, but I just want a quick sanity check to see that we're, we're there within the ballpark. So I'll rotate the chuck through 360 degrees, and you can see the dial test indicator deflects to about negative 1.4 thousandths. Uh, each of those tick marks is half a thou and up to about plus 1.4 thousandths. Obviously, I zeroed it out at the midpoint before uh, starting the video. So total indicated run out here is about 2.8 thou, which is within the specification of the chuck. As a quick sanity check, this tells me that it's mounted pretty well. I, I certainly have a very usable setup, and uh, it's within a few thou, so I'm pretty happy with that. Well, the video wouldn't be complete without a demo, and I'll do a much more interesting demo with the CNC system, but I want to do a quick demo to wrap this video up. I'm going to use the fourth axis in its simplest mode, simply as an indexing head. And so I've got it mounted on the milling machine, and I'm going to cut a hexagonal face on the front of this piece of brass. And I'm just going to make a cut manually and then use the MPG wheel on the CNC controller to rotate the head 60 degrees in between each cut. Okay, now to rotate at 60 degrees. And we cut again. Well, for a first test, I think that worked great. Well, that concludes the part two video of my construction of a harmonic drive fourth axis assembly. Uh, in an upcoming video, I will do some more extensive testing of the runout and especially the backlash of the harmonic drive because I'm interested to see how that comes out. My plan is to powder coat the assembly, but I'll do that in a, in a separate video. So uh, stay tuned for that and uh, subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.